What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Tyler. I'm the host of the Fish Craze YouTube Fishing Channel. And for this week's content, we're continuing the how-to series on how to trout fish. We're using the inline spinner. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the inline spinner, where and how I like to use it, the rod and reel that I like to throw them on, and a few recommendations I might have. But we got all day today to throw this inline spinner and figure these fish out. We're out on the water now. Let's get into it. The gear you're going to need to throw an inline spinner is not all that specific. You can pick your favorite rod and reel combo and just go hit the water. The only recommendation I have would be to make sure that your rod is rated to throw the size of lures you're throwing. So today I'm throwing a 3 16 ounce spinner. My rod's rated to throw 1 16 up to 3 8 ounce, so it's perfect to throw on this setup here. If you're going to throw a lot of inline spinners or any bait for that matter that has a lot of action, I would recommend tying on, you guys won't be able to see it here, I have to do a close up. You're going to want to use a barrel swivel. That's going to extend the life of your line. You're not going to get a ton of line twists, and you're going to be able to use that floor carbon a little longer. Hopefully the camera will focus in on that there, but that is a barrel swivel. All that is, you're going to attach it to your line and a little bit of leader and then to your spinner. So again, that's going to keep line twists out of your line and extend the life of your floor carbon. So there's a ton of spinners out there, but this is my personal favorite, and I like to keep it simple. So this is a fish hawk spinner. Um, you can pick these up and I'll leave a link in the description down below. There's a ton of different styles of spinners out there, you know, different brands. You got double blades, you got dress feathered hooks. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there, but I like to keep it simple. That is the most simple spinner that I think I've ever seen. I like to throw just a silver and gold blade. Like I said, there's a ton of colors out there. So you have to play around with it, see which one works best for you and your water. But if you're just going out to pick some up, start with silver and gold. One more thing I would recommend when you're picking out a spinner to use is to pay attention to cloud cover. So if you got a lot of sunlight out when you're fishing, general rule of thumb, throw a silver blade. If it's cloudy and there's not a lot of light, throw gold. That silver blade is gonna reflect a lot more sunlight and that gold blade is gonna be just a little more subtle. All right, so let's get to fishing this thing and let's talk about how I like to fish it and some different ways you can throw it. So what I recommend doing anytime you pull up anywhere is to fish the lower section of the hole first. If I was to go to the top of this hole and catch a fish and then have to fight it all the way down to the bottom, I'm going to spook any other fish I'm going to be able to catch had I started down here. So throwing an inline spinner, super simple. The only thing you need to make sure this bait is doing is turning that blade. You can fish this bait any way you want. So you can cast downstream, bring it upstream, cast across and let it swing down through current. Or my personal favorite would be casting upstream and just bringing it right down the current seam. I feel like that makes it look as natural as possible. And when I cast downstream, it likes to float up in the water column. So I don't feel like it works as good as if you cast directly across stream or cast upstream. But like I said, there's no wrong way to fish this thing. So as long as that blade's turning and it's down in the water column you're trying to reach, you're probably gonna catch fish. Also, I may have forgot to mention where I like to look for trout. And this is all gonna change on your body water, depending on whether you're fishing a creek or uh, like still water like a lake. So if you're fishing a creek or a river, the three things I look for is current, depth, and some sort of structure. Depth's gonna be relevant to your body of water as well. So this river's not very deep right now. We haven't had a lot of rain. So this right here is a deeper pool, probably three feet deep. It's got a nice current seam in the middle and there's plenty of rocks for these fish to get in and hang out. But the more you get out and trout fish your local bodies of water, you're gonna be able to pinpoint them a little bit easier and kind of put a pattern on them to where they like to sit and hide. And once you kind of figure that out, you can target more specific areas, eliminate some water, and have better success catching fish. All right, so we fished in some pretty shallow water, and right here, this hole has got some pretty good depth. So like I said earlier, you're looking for current, depth, and structure. This hole checks all three boxes. We got plenty of depth rocks for trout to get in and hide, current rolling through from the top of the hole. I'll be surprised if we don't catch a fish here. There we go. Oh, pretty good fish too. 
nice little rainbow it looks like oh he's not done now he is yeah that's a pretty fish right there if you guys can see this right here there's a bunch of rocks in the water and i was bringing that spinner on the inside of that right in that current seam and he nailed it all right guys another quick tip always make sure your hands are wet before you handle any trout you don't want to rub that slime coat off if you're planning on releasing them which we are in a wild trout stream so i will release all of these fish spinner's right in the corner of his mouth that is a beautiful beautiful wild rainbow trout let's get this guy released Oh, I just had a hit. Ooh, that was a good fish. Right up here at the head of the current this time. Oh, we hit it again. That's a good fish, man. Looks like another rainbow. Third time. Oh, he was on it again. Oh my gosh. I'm just casting right across the current and letting it swing back down through. He's went after it three times, man. There we go. <laughs> that was so cool. Uh, it's not a rainbow, it's a brown trout. Just jumped in my net. Solid brown. All right, guys, let's check him out. Oh, he actually spit the spinner in the net. Oh, take it easy. It's a beautiful wild brown right there. And I hope the GoPro caught it. This fish, it come at that lure four times, which is unheard of. Usually, in my experience, you get one or two tries, but four casts back to back, this fish wanted to eat. That's crazy, man. Let's get him back. So like I said, I fished this entire hole this time, but this fish come all the way up, nearly in the head of the current. Got plenty of rocks over there. It was like a current break. It was sitting right in the middle of all those. Oh yeah. There's one. Yeah. Well. Like to chill out, sir. That's a pretty one. So there you go. That fish come right here in this little pool on the back side of this rock. Two current seams rolling around it. Nice little current break. And just sitting right in the middle. There we go. Nice little brown trout. There's my net. There it is. That's a solid fish. Well, I was going to get the tripod and the camera out for this one, but it's starting to get dark. I don't have much more time to fish. So we're just going to let this guy go. That's another one on the spinner. That was cool.